Hi everyone, I'm Alexa Van Haddam. I'm a rising junior at Brown University studying physics and computer science. And I've been studying this summer the effects of size dependent island edge barriers on submodular layer nucleation, working with Professor Jacobar. So the motivation for my project was, as Brooke just talked about and a lot of other people have done in this RU, uh, there's experiments obviously going on with growing thin films, and I'm working on the theoretical side of that. And so the, what we're trying to model is molecular beam peptaxy, which is layer by layer growth. Um, so there are two kind of main regimes of this. There's the submonolayer island nucleation, which is where you have the substrate and the first particles that are deposited and how they interact with each other. And then you have the multilayer growth, where you get um, subsequent like growth. And I'm focused on the submonolayer layer. So what I've been doing this summer is running kinetic Monte Carlo simulations that I wrote in C. And so the basic idea is that you carry out each event with that rate divided by the total rate. And for me, that means I have a lattice of particle locations. And based on the results of the random number generator, I carry out one of two steps, either a deposition step, which is where you add one to the height of a location, or a diffusion step, which is where a monomer, which is a particle by itself, diffuses to a nearest neighbor location. And what happens is, depending on the material parameters, when monomers are adjacent to each other, they form stable islands that stop diffusing and become stationary. So this is a simulation I ran just of a basic submonolayer growth. And you can see that islands are formed, and in this case, they form fractal islands. So the theory that goes behind this, that this has been around for a couple decades now, is that there are four different scaling regimes within submonolayer growth. Um, you have here the monomer density M1 and the island density M. And the first regime that you have is nucleation, which is on this log log plot you can see at the beginning you have more monomers than islands and they both grow as a power relation. And then for the intermediate coverages you have uh, that the monomer density starts to die as monomers are deposited, they diffuse really quickly into islands. And then for the activation regime, you have the island density becomes about constant. You're not really getting new islands, the islands are just getting bigger. And then last, you have coalescence, which is when the islands get so big that they combine and the density dies off. And so the key parameter that I'm focused on is this ratio between the diffusion and the deposition, R. And so the diffusion is determined by the material parameter, and the deposition is something you would set experimentally. And so along with this classic nucleation theory, we have that the island density scales as a function of that ratio R, and we know that it scales as a negative power relation with an exponent chi. And so the approximation we use is the critical size approximation, which is that you assume, depending on the material, that there's some specific number of particles that form a stable island, Z, and then one less than that is the critical island size, I. So it's the smallest unstable island. And theory says that chi, this exponent, will go as I over I plus two, and this is assuming that the growth is limited primarily by diffusion. So the rate at which the islands grow is controlled mostly by how long it takes the particle to diffuse to that island. And so what the main point of the slide is just this exponent is a negative exponent and that it goes with this very nice clear formula. So we have recent experiments, this was done in I think 2012, that they found a chi value of 0 0.8 for the um, lower deposition rates and then a chi value of 1.3 for the higher deposition. And so this is a problem because this is totally incompatible with the classic theory. The equation I showed before has a limit at 1. And so a possible explanation that's been offered is that this idea of attachment limited aggregation in which there's a barrier for a monomer to join an island. So now island growth is also controlled by the, the fact that there's a barrier that might be called, caused by um, if there's like a gas on the substrate maybe that is hanging around the island and blocking it. And all these experiments that are showing this kind of unexpected growth have to deal with organic particles, which are more complicated, their shapes might be different, and it's overall less understood. Alright, so I started off the summer, this is kind of where I was at the last talk, 
just simulating a basic lattice with i equals 1, so that's just any island is stable, and added in barriers that decreasing the probability that a miner would attach to an island by different uh, factors. And so what I found is that while the island density goes up as you increase the barrier, the scaling, so the chi, the exponent, actually goes down, which is the opposite of what you would kind of expect given that you're thinking the barriers are causing this unusually high chi. So then I went back to the literature and there's some other interesting experiments or uh, papers that were done. And one of them is a molecular dynamics experiment about these different rod-shaped particles. Um, the reason being that the original experiment was done with pentacene, which is shown on the right, and it's five benzene rings in a, in a rod. And so this other experiment showed that if you have rod-shaped particles on a substrate, originally when they land and are monomers and when they form the initial stable island, they lie flat on the substrate, but at some later point, uh, the entire island actually stands up and becomes vertical. So this is important because um, it tells us that the orientation of the monomers could be causing this barrier. And even more than that, it tells us there might be a size dependence. So it might be that there's no barrier for attachment for a critical island, but then once the island gets bigger, there is a barrier. So this is where it got really fun for me as a CS person because um, the old way that we were counting islands was this brute force method. You have like a thousand by thousand array. You would iterate through the entire thing, and every time you took data, so like a hundred times, you would count the number of islands. But the new requirement for my project was that I needed to know the size of every island at every step. And there are like millions of steps per simulation. So the solution I came up with was to use union find, which is something that's pretty standard in computer science as part of graph theory and some other things, and it has to deal with disjoint sets that are then merged. And the way it works is you have your lattice with your islands, and each particle has a pointer to another particle in the same island. And if you follow those pointers up, they're going to lead to a single particle that's chosen as the representative member, or like the root of that island. So if you know computer science, they form directional trees. And the root is the only one that has to know what the size is. So the real benefits of this are that it's constant time for diffusion and attachment, which means adding a new monomer to an island or having a monomer diffuse around is only like a simple operation and it's not dependent on the size of the lattice or the size of the island. And the even cooler thing is that when you have islands merge, so if you have a new particle deposit in between islands that forms a bridge, this also is constant time. So even though the islands might be huge, you don't have to iterate through the whole island to update what their size is. You only have to add a pointer from one island to the other and add the size. So it's still a, a constant time operation. And this is exciting because we thought this might really slow down the simulation, having to know the information at every single step. But it actually ended up running just like a little bit faster. So that's cool. So I went and simulated a size dependent barrier on the same simple model that I equals one. And the results are a little better in the sense that chi does go from 0 0.35 up to 3.6, which isn't really anything. You know, that's not a significant result. So this was still pretty inconclusive. And so I decided to switch to a more complicated model with a critical island size of 3. So now instead of any island being stable, only islands with four particles or greater are stable. But the problem with this was that my new special algorithm totally broke when this happened, because union find as it is, standalone, doesn't allow sets to break apart. There's no mechanism for splitting things off. And for higher critical ion sizes, you need to have monomers that can detach. And so what we did was just kind of play around with it, ended up finding this like solution with a modified union find delete, where when a, some particle detaches from an island, you do have to iterate through that whole island and update all the pointers. But the good thing is, is this still isn't dependent on the lattice size, it's only dependent on the island size. So this is pretty new. I looked and as far as I can tell, no one else has used union find for island counting. So that's kind of exciting. And um, I still think that there's a lot of optimization that could go into this algorithm. And right now I'm running simulations that happen all summer on the Ohio supercomputer. And single simulations are starting to run for a really long time because of detachment is more costly. So here are some results then with the higher critical island size. So still not really seeing 
what we wanted to see. In the sense that uh, theory and without a barrier, you would expect this to go as two thirds, so 0 0.66. And we were getting close to that without a barrier, but then adding in a size dependent barrier still didn't get a, um, these higher chi values that we were searching for. So this was still pretty inconclusive. Um, what was interesting is when you look at the island density as a function of coverage, I found something that had been proposed before in some other papers that when you have this barrier, the early nucleation regime is extended. So here, you know, it starts to saturate much earlier than it does here. And then the other kind of new thing I also noticed is that coalescence also happens sooner. So while in the case in blue without a barrier, you kind of plateau for quite a while, with a barrier, um, the decay of the island size starts to happen sooner. And so this was interesting because if I um, experimentally you usually take the value of chi or the value of um, and the island density to compare at a coverage of like 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. And so originally I was taking it at 0 0.3 in my simulations. But when I look, went and like looked at the actual uh, simulation itself and took the peak island density, I got slightly different results. And so this is just kind of an interesting thing because it could mean that maybe the experiments are getting their unusual high values as like a residual of taking the data at a point when they think the atom density is constant when it's actually not constant. So the conclusions I drew are that, you know, really it's inconclusive, so there's a lot more work to be done. But there's this interesting thing we can investigate with the fixed coverage and where you're taking it. And then also have some ideas for more complex models like counting the number of bonds the particle would join and having that affect the barrier, as well as having detachment be size dependent as well. And then also I think, again, there's a future optimization you can do for the new find delay. I would like to thank my faculty mentor, Jacques Amar, this summer. I learned a lot. I didn't know C for the summer, didn't know about my power, so that was really cool. And also I'd like to thank Rick and the other students, the NSF for funding this, and the University of Toledo for hosting it. Uh, can you go back to your first plot? First plot. Yeah, very, very beginning, like second slide or something like that. Yeah, okay, so that. <laughs> yeah this guy. Um, can you tell me what theta is and what the other x is? Yeah, so, sorry. Um, theta is the coverage, which is the, the fraction of the substrate that's covered in particles. So in the case of my simulation, it's just the number deposited divided by the lattice size. And then the axis here is just the density of monomers and islands, which is the number of monomers divided by lattice size, the number of islands divided by lattice size. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. When you were submitting your jobs to the queue at the Ohio Supercomputer, are they hanging in there a long time or you get them? Yeah. yeah. Um, before they get sent on, or is it pretty rare? A few rare hours, it depends. Uh, it? Originally, I was being lazy and just like having multiple runs go in one file and oh, yeah. the parallel computing. Um, so I had to switch now to doing single runs of each simulation, each simulation, and then combining them afterwards. Yeah. Right. So. Any other questions? Yeah. Can you say just one word about this mysterious algorithm, this search, find, count, whatever it's called? What was that? Well, yeah, the thing you used. Union find, yeah. Union find, yeah. What is that? I mean, where does it come from? It so yeah, it, it's a thing. Um, the basic algorithm is that if you have a bunch of objects and you want to put them in groups and the groups converge, it's a way of keeping track of what group each object is in. So this is used, if you know about, um, anything about graph theory, it's used in the minimum spanning tree of a graph. So like uh, Preskill's algorithm. And the basic idea is that instead of having each object know what group it's in, you have each object have a pointer to something else that can tell you what group it's in. Does that make sense? And you follow the pointers to some special. Yeah, and the reason the way you can tell it's special in the actual code is it just that has itself as a parent. So it points to itself. 
So anytime you have something point to itself, you know that's the special one, and then that's where you store the size. Mm -hmm. Questions, anyone? All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot.